Good afternoon and welcome to what I hope is going to be a short but very positive and in some respects life transforming experience. I've been talking to a lot of people over the last year and there's a kind of recurring theme when it comes to stress. People are thinking about what they can't do and they don't have and winding themselves up about it by thinking about it over and over again. Or the other thing that I've noticed people doing is catastrophizing, thinking, um, oh, what if I get sick or my family gets sick or, or the economy crashes or um, everything stops, you know, the world stops spinning, if you like. And um, whilst um, I hear people refer to the coronaphobia, a phobia is um, an irrational fear. Now, it's totally rational to have some fear or concern about this virus uh, because it's dangerous. But if all you ever do is think about everything that could go wrong, and that's what the word catastrophizing means, there won't be any bandwidth in your thinking for creativity, joy, uh, for, um, for all the things that make you feel good. Plus, it will exhaust you. It will be tiring to be white knuckles to life and, and thinking about everything that could go wrong. In fact, there's a, there's a saying by Mark Twain, which is, I've been through some terrible experiences in my life, and some of them actually happened. So I think it's a really good idea to have appropriate levels of concern so that you do things to keep yourself safe, but you do not exhaust yourself by worrying too much about everything, every little detail. And of course, some people say, well, that's easier said than done because I'm a natural born warrior. And so I wanna do two processes with you in the next few minutes. Um, the first one is to do with the future. One of the other things I've noticed um, is that people have uh, stopped making plans or to some extent they're not thinking about the future in the same way because it's not obvious where the end point is, where things will return to a new normal. And um, human beings like certainty, we know whenever studies are done into what people most fear, the unknown is always in the top 10, sometimes higher than death. So even though we can't say exactly what will happen when, you can't lock down human imagination. And so I'd like you to do just a simple visualization process with me. And then after that, we're going to do an extraordinary meditation. I'll explain more about that in a moment. So what I'd like you to do, if it's safe and appropriate to do so, just close your eyes. Don't go off into trance or anything like that. Just close your eyes. And I'd like you to imagine floating out a year from now, 2022. And I'd like you to imagine that you've had a really great year. Despite everything that's gone on, you've had a really amazing year. Now, if that's true, what must have happened in regard to your health, both physical and mental? Think about it. If you've had a brilliant, amazing year, what's happened in regard to your health, physical and mental? And then what's happened in regard to your relationships, personal and professional? What's happened in regard to your career? What's happened in regard to your finances? And what's happened in regard to your happiness? If you've had an amazing year, what are the things that have made you happy? Next, I'd like you to step back and make a big, bright, bold picture that represents all of those aspects of your life. So look at you, a year there in the future, looking really healthy and happy. Yeah, see the light shining behind your eyes. How do you breathe, stand, you know, gesture? This you that's really happy, joyous, confident, motivated, optimistic. And what are the things around you in this picture let you know your life's good? Relationships are good, careers good, finances are good, happiness levels are off the scale. Take a few moments to design that picture now and make it big and bright and bold and solid so that when you look at it, you get a good feeling. That's it, yeah. Now make that picture even bigger, like the size of a, of a cinema screen. And what I want you to do is float back from that picture three months and ask yourself, in order for all that really great stuff to have happened in my life, what happened three months before that? Now, you might get some very clear ideas, or it may just be intuitions, thoughts, well, it could be a bit of that, or maybe this sort of thing happened. 
But as long as you get something, that's all that matters. And then I'd like you to float back another three months from that and ask yourself what needed to have happened three months before that. That's right, and let your mind get an idea of the things that are happening in order to lead to that you a year from now that's real happy. And then float back another three months before that. And another three months before that until you're back here now. So as you look off into your future, you should see some images of things that are gonna occur over the next year and a year from now, a big, bright, bold, colorful picture of you looking healthy, happy, and your life good. Because the mind would be a bit like a heat-seeking missile. When you give it a target to point at these big goals, something that you know, is meaningful to you, then you've got a reason to leap out of bed in the morning. You have to have you know, big enough goals to get you out of bed in the morning, but small things on the way so it doesn't seem too overwhelming. So what we've created there is a, a set of ideas which will manifest either as pictures or thoughts, three, six, nine, and 12 months from now, a target to head towards. Now, you don't have to think about this every day, but the more often you think about it, the more likely these things are to come true. One of my friends says, if you tell a lamppost your plans every day, they're just more likely to happen. So what I'd like you to do, that's right, is keep that in mind because we tend to get more of what we focus on in life. And next, I'd like to do a little meditation with you. This was um, created by my friend Genpo Roshi. He's a Zen master and he's more like a therapist than a priest, but he invented this meditation some years ago and it's been the subject of much debate, in fact, and of scientific research at Utah University, where they have one of these amazing new multi-million dollar brain image resonancing chambers. They take a seasoned monk, 20 year meditator, put them in the chamber, they do their meditation and they map their brain waves. Then they take someone off the street who's never meditated before in their life and they put them in, Genpo does big mind with them, they have the same patterns. So this is considered to be a highly advanced form of meditation. And the reason I suggest we do this is because in our busy life, where there are lots of stresses all day long, we're often told, uh, say at school, you learned, you, you learn, you know, not to daydream, stop daydreaming, lad, come on, focus. And so what we tend to do is override the natural signals from our body that we need to stop, rest and replenish. In fact, every 90 minutes, there's um, something called the ultradian rest phase, which is a natural uh, cycle of rest and relaxation, uh, whereby what happens is we, we get the invitation to relax from a sweet, soft feeling in our muscles and a sort of daydreamy kind of quality in our thinking. But very often we tend to override that. And so what research has shown is that people that tend to go with that once or twice a day actually have more energy in the long run and they're likely to be less stressed. So I'm gonna invite you to do this meditation with me now. It's very simple and straightforward. It just involves you sitting back and relaxing and my voice will go with you as you go into a, a calm and gentle, peaceful pace. And I'm gonna to talk to various aspects of you. You know, like when you say, part of me wants to go to the cinema, but part of me wants to stay at home. It's not as though there are two yous. These are just ways of describing the process. So, Take a deep breath in, close your eyes and relax if it's safe and appropriate to do so. And I'd like you to imagine how you would look if you were twice as relaxed as you are right now. And float into that more relaxed you. See through the eyes of your more relaxed self. hear through the ears of your more relaxed self and feel this deeper relaxation. And from this place, I'd like you to imagine how you would look if you were twice as relaxed as you are right now. And then float in to this more relaxed you see through the eyes of your more relaxed self, hear through the ears of your more relaxed self, 
to feel this deeper relaxation. And from this place, I'd like you to imagine how you would look if you were twice as relaxed as you are right now and float in to that more relaxed you. See through the eyes of your more relaxed self. Hear through the ears. Feel this deeper relaxation. Well, I'd like to talk to that part of you we'll refer to as the controller, part of you that likes to be in control. And I want to thank it for doing all the good things that it does for you. But for now, for the purpose of this process, from the background of your experience. Just to move to the back. Next, I'd like to talk to that part of you we we'll refer to as the protector, part of you that keeps you safe. And I'd like to thank it for doing all the good things that it does for you. But for now, from the background of your experience. Next, I'd like to talk to that part of you we'll refer to as the evaluator, part of you that analyzes, judges, criticizes. And I'd like to thank it for doing all the good things that it does for you. But for now, if it could do them from the background of your experience, appreciate that. Next, I'd like to talk to part of you we'll refer to as desire, part of you that gets you things. And I'd like to thank it for doing all the things it does for you. But for now, if you could do them from the background of your experience, that'd be great. So you let go of all desire in this moment. Next, I'd like to talk to that part of you we'll refer to as the seeking mind the mind that seeks the way. And I'd like it to continue to do all the good things that it does for you, but for now, from the background of your experience. And now I'd like to talk to non-seeking, contented mind. Right now, there's nowhere else to be, nothing to be done. Everything is as it is. Next, I'd like to talk to Big Mind. How big are you? How small are you? Is there anything you're not? When are you? Next, I'd like to talk to Big Heart, the infinite compassion. I'd like you to take any problems, worries, challenges, or stresses and allow them to exist in this expanded consciousness and transform. And enjoy this peace. Because soon it will be time to return to normal waking consciousness, feeling refreshed, relaxed and alert with a renewed sense of optimism and deep inner joy. As I count back from 10 to one, awakening, refreshed and alert. 10, nine, Eight. That's right, beginning to come back now. Seven, six, five. Feeling refreshed, relaxed and alert. Four, three. That's right, you might want to stretch and yawn as you awaken. Two, one. Wakey, wakey. Well, I hope you found that relaxing. 
and uh, and rejuvenating. Thank you very much.